Welcome to Culture Talk. This is the segment where we talk about the intersection of science, faith, and pop culture, and how culturally relevant topics can be used to start conversations about your faith. I'm joined today with JPL consultant and, and physicist, Dave Rockstead. Thank you for joining us. Yes, very happy to be here. Yeah, we're excited because it's going to be the 50th anniversary of the landing on the moon. Yes. Yeah. It was uh, pretty exciting. I was actually a, uh, a researcher at Caltech at the time mm -hmm. of this. I, while I'm a physicist, I did research in radio astronomy. And uh, when this uh, encounter took place, uh, there was a neighbor across the street who, uh, when I talked to them about it, you know, excitedly, uh, did they watch it on TV yeah. and so on, they thought it was all a hoax. Ugh. I just couldn't believe it. I, I never yeah. had encountered people like that. Right, it's who, fascinating. And and it is kind of, a, it's gained momentum. Some people truly believe that the lunar landing, man's first steps on the moon, it was all a Hollywood production. Yeah. Um, so first, let's dive into your background, and then we'll get into some of the myths right. about this. I, yeah, I, as I mentioned, I was, uh, I'm a physicist. I got my degree at Caltech, mm -hmm. did research in radio astronomy, was there when this encounter took place. I then was uh, uh, going to Holland, and in fact, the encounter that took place six months later uh, was when we were living over in Holland. Oh, wow. And I was doing radio astronomy over there mm -hmm. for a couple of years. And then I came back to Caltech and worked there for a few more years. And in 74, I went to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Yeah. And I stayed there for, you know, all well, until now. Yeah. I uh, retired in 2001, but I uh, still have a lingering role. Yeah. And uh, I was involved in a lot of different, very interesting projects. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was communications with spacecraft. Mm -hmm. So I'm developing, helping to develop the special uh, uh, technology, receivers, transmitters, right. uh, antenna uh, projects that uh, are, are used to communicate with, with the spacecraft that go either to the moon or more particularly to Galileo, the uh, mission that went to Jupiter, was a major project that we were involved in. Wow. And uh, so I, you know, I've been part of this, this uh, technology development and, and uh, community of doing space uh, investigations for quite a long time. Right, so you're well versed in talking about this topic. Well, I, you know, I, I wasn't directly involved right. in this particular project, but I was certainly involved in things that are related to it and right. follow on projects. That... Right. Uh, so we are going to be talking about the lunar landing and two particular reasons why people believe that it was just a Hollywood production. One of the beliefs that conspiracists have is that the lunar landing was a hoax because we have two different light sources showing up um, and shadows showing up That's right. in photos. So how can you respond to that? Well, uh, you know, I, if you can go online, you can actually see explanations of this. The fact that there are multiple sources of light, the mm -hmm. moon itself, the sun, the Earth, of course, the spacecraft and the and the uh, astronauts themselves mm -hmm. uh, are providing sources of light. So it does appear like there are multiple sources of light. Mm -hmm. And you also have the fact that the surface of the moon at the location where they were at is not flat. It's mm -hmm. actually sloped. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't expect to see parallel lines. You wouldn't expect to see uh, just one source of light. You would expect right. to see several sources of light. And isn't it true that the surface of the moon functions much differently than like a pile of dirt on Earth? Well, it's much brighter mm -hmm. in, in its uh, reflectivity mm -hmm. of these various light sources. So yes, I think that would be certainly a, a, an explanation for why. I know another thing, by the way, is mm -hmm. this flag waving. Yeah. They look at the flag and they say it's waving. How can it be waving mm -hmm. if there's no atmosphere on the moon? Mm -hmm. But in fact, uh, the astronauts had handled the flag quite a bit before they actually placed it up. And there were some rods that were used to kind of maintain the flag up in an upward position. Mm -hmm. And those were bent in such a way that it looks like the flag is waving, right. but in fact, it's not really waving at all. What would it actually take to fake the lunar landing? Well, when you consider that we're about 400,000 people were involved mm -hmm. in this project, you would have to have a conspiracy that fooled 400,000 people. 
Mm -hmm. I've been involved in projects here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory that doesn't take nearly that many people. But, but I mean, you know, you're excited about what you're doing and you mm -hmm. really uh, are motivated because you know that it's real that you're working on. Mm -hmm. I uh, met a uh, one of the chief technologists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, often got the question, uh, what about the hoax and what about mm -hmm. the faking? By the way, today, of course, we could fake it much better than we mm -hmm. could back 50 years ago. Yeah. And his response to people was that NASA actually looked into faking the moon landing, but it turned out it was cheaper to actually do the real thing <laughs> than it was to fake it. I thought that was a pretty good oh, answer. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> well, and now we have more evidence. So if the lunar landing were faked, would we, we would expect then that what we've seen of the moon since then would not corroborate with the evidence and what, with the surface of the moon that we've seen. We um, have so much more information. We have rocks that we've right. gotten back. We have the corroboration of the actual event from the British and from the Russians, mm -hmm. by the way, mm -hmm. who are our competitors right. in this whole space race. And then, uh, as I said, we had 400,000 people working on this thing. And one of the complaints that people have made is if you could put Hubble telescope on there, why can't it see the spacecraft that's mm -hmm. uh, supposedly sitting there on the moon? And the answer is that if you calculate what the resolution is of the Hubble telescope, it's about the size of a house. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't be able to see it from the Hubble. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there have been spacecraft in the meantime put into orbit. There's a thing called the Lunar Reconnaissance Orb Orbiter, LRO, mm -hmm. that's orbiting the moon, taking pictures. And it is able to actually see the spacecraft as it sits on the moon. Wow. The, the resolution is sufficient and the closeness of the spacecraft is sufficient to where you're able to actually see the the, the spacecraft wow. is sitting on the moon. So as we celebrate 50 years, we can say not a hoax. Not a hoax. Not a hoax. It was a real thing. This right. is a, an exciting adventure that we're mm -hmm. involved in. And as I said, I'm involved in a lot of other things going to Mars. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've made tremendous strides in putting spacecraft out there, taking pictures. The most recent, of course, was these pictures that were taken out there by this New Horizon spacecraft beyond Pluto. Yeah. So we're doing this kind of stuff. And by the way, I'm involved in projects where we're communicating with these spacecrafts every week. Yeah. And we're getting new information.